Hey guys, it's Holly and today we're going to be having a look at probably the one of the most wanted and most anticipated sets of the summer 2022 wave and that is the ATTE. This is set 75337 and is absolutely massive and a very, very exciting moment for many Star Wars fans. But in order to enjoy this set and all of its glory, you have to spend 130 US dollars or 230 Australian. Now a lot of the popularity of course with this set comes down to its clone building potential, having the brand new two 12 troopers, but most importantly importantly, the brand new Phase 2 Commander Cody. This is also my first ever ATTE, so I'm really excited to go and have a look at it. So here is the ATTE, and overall, I think it's a pretty solid set. It's definitely not my favorite and did sort of underwhelm me a little bit, but as a whole, I do really enjoy it. So before we take a close look at it, let's have a look at the minifigures. So up first, let's take a look at Commander Cody, and wow, I really like this figure. I really didn't care too much for him for quite a while. It's only really after I started playing the Skywalker Saga that I really want to see this figure be made in real life. I loved the design of the figure in that game, so to be able to get one that is really close to that really excites me. I think he looks amazing. I personally don't mind the helmet on him. I think it looks fine, though admittedly, with this newer helmet design, I really think that this sort of of a hole here should have been brought up. I get why the holes on the helmet are a lot higher because the visor looks really good in this position, but I think even, even though it's technically, I guess, not accurate, that these holes should have been brought up just so that there wasn't two of them placed. I mean, it doesn't look necessarily too bad in Cody's case, but you'll start to see, I guess, where the issues lie with the two 12th troopers, but overall, Commander Cody looks fantastic. You get a whole little bag full of these orange visors as well as the little antennas, which is amazing and underneath his helmet, he actually has a brand new clone face, which personally, I mean, I'm kind of confused as to why Lego did do that, but in saying that, I'm not mad. I mean, it gives us a lot of variety, it looks great, but I feel like it was sort of one of those prints that they guess they really didn't need to do, which then leads me to my next point. I would have rather him had the same clone face as everyone else and have the Palpatine hologram. The second I saw this set and it got revealed, I knew that I wanted to pick up one of those little Palpatine hologram pieces, because because he just felt a little lost without it. And I just love that screenshot from the Skywalker saga where Cody is like talking to Palpatine over the hologram. It looks amazing. Now that we have that figure in real life, I want to replicate that. So it is a little bit disappointing that it didn't come in the set. I definitely think that's probably the biggest thing, at least in my opinion, that's missing from the set. So if you haven't bought one already, I highly suggest you do because the price of them has been creeping up ever since this got announced and it's starting to get a little bit ridiculous how much they're costing. Up next is the regular two 12th trooper, and you get three of these in this set, one of which with the short blaster, and two with the longer one with the candlestick on the end, but all three of their designs are the same. Now, this was actually pointed out a couple of weeks ago that in real life, the helmets actually don't look the same as the render. The triangle is cut off a little bit, so technically it's a little bit inaccurate. Now, admittedly, having this in person, that triangle does look a little bit more pointed than some of the photos I'd seen originally. However, it is a little bit disappointing that it was perfect in the render and unfortunately the helmets technically are a little bit inaccurate. I don't think it's too big of an issue but it's something that I've definitely noticed and speaking of these helmets when they don't have a visor they do look quite bulky. They look quite wide compared to the regular phase two helmets which looks a bit odd but again it's definitely these little holes. I would have wished that was brought up a little bit or at least they just didn't use these helmets for the 212th at all. I don't think it's a major issue but it's definitely something that annoys me a little bit. But besides that, the design for these clones are fantastic and I can't wait to put them with the rest of my clone troopers. And of course, underneath the helmet, he has the classic updated clone head. Moving along to technically the 212th clone gunner, although I really don't think that that's necessarily accurate. I mean, I don't really think there was a 212th clone gunner, but nevertheless, again, he looks amazing. And just like the 212th has that newer helmet design, which again, I don't think is quite right, but at least the printing on him is accurate. There's nothing too special about him, but I am glad he is included in this set because it gives someone to, I guess, like a man at the ATT, as well as the turret on the top. And he comes along with one of those smaller blaster pieces. And lastly, we have my favorite minifigure of all, and that is the classic little battle droid. And there are three of them in this set, complete with those sort of gunmetal gray blasters, which look amazing. I love these things. They're so simple. They're so basic. I love building my army with them. So having three in the set, really big win for me. So bag one of this set is the little spider droid. And apparently this is inaccurate to the movie. Honestly, 
I didn't notice. It's not something that I, I guess, paid enough attention to or remember enough of to know that it was wrong. So for me, I don't really mind that it's a spider droid and not a crab droid, or maybe it's the other way around. I genuinely can't remember at this point. Either way, the build looks amazing. I think it's a little neat addition. I mean, it's very clearly one of those things where, hey, there's a couple of extra parts and room in our budget. Let's throw a little side build in. Like, that's really what this was. And I mean, they've done similar designs and models before. It doesn't really surprise me that it's in this set. I think it's a little neat addition. I love the use of the droid torsos in order to make the legs. You've got a little transparent piece at the bottom so it can sit there and a turret at the top with a little antenna. Overall, the build's pretty cute. I don't personally really care that it's inaccurate because I didn't notice, but I mean, there you go. Here is the latest Star Wars ATTE, which just like an ATAT -AT, looks a lot like a gray dog, which is probably one of the reasons why I keep stuffing up the name of this set. Now, before I really get into it, I don't know much about ATTEs. I love Revenge of the Sith, don't get me wrong, but this is just one of those things that sort of flew under the radar a lot of the time for me. I mean, it looks cool. Yeah, but I just feel like it wasn't as, I guess, recognizable or stood out as much to me personally as a lot of the other things from the prequels did. But nevertheless, it's a set that I'm really excited for, mostly because of the minifigure selection. But in saying that, the model that I got as well is really cool. However, first things first, if you've got a pre-existing ATTE, I really don't think that there's much point in buying this set. I mean, if you're really after, I guess, just the clones or Commander Cody, wait until this set's been out several months. I mean, this is an army building type of thing, so I can't imagine that Cody's going to be too expensive for too long. So you could probably just wait on that because at the end of the day, these models all look very similar. Now, also in terms of build, I personally wasn't a huge fan of this one, mainly because it's very technic based, very technic heavy, and has a lot of repetition because of the legs. Now, I'm not going to put down the repetition too much considering, you know, I did expect it with this model, but the technic building did throw me off. If you're a really big fan of Technic building, you will probably love this. However, that's something that I'm personally not, so I didn't find the build all too enjoyable. It wasn't too hard, it wasn't too challenging, but it was just very repetitive, nothing too special, and not a lot of sort of brick-on-brick -brick action. It's very much just stick this Technic pin in here, place that there. Like, it wasn't anything amazing or super incredible, I guess. Now, as for the build itself, my favorite thing about this set is just how much this set moves. You can open up the side panels, you can spin the turret, you can spin these mini turrets, you can slide this section out, the feet sort of dangle a little bit. There's also a carrying handle, which is incredibly convenient, and I'm glad that they did put in that in there, because that, for me personally, is a massive win in terms of features, as I often have to pick up my sets and move them out of storage containers and move them off shelves. So a handle, for me, definitely is the best and greatest feature of this. So the handle just sticks up the top and you pull on these little Technic pieces here and you can lift up the whole thing. It's not quite centered, so when you do lift it up, it does kind of wobble around a little bit and sort of is a bit lopsided, but really I don't see any issues with that. And then when I do pick it up as well, you can sort of see how the feet jingle and jangle around. Now when it does come to the legs, it can't really walk necessarily. There's a tiny bit of posability, especially with this middle leg, which can swivel around. But in terms of these back legs, you can't really rotate them all that much. They sort of default into this position purely because of how heavy it is, but there is a little bit of movement there. At the front of the ATTE, there are these four turret things, little blaster guns all at the front. There's also this really big cannon turret at the top here. This front section as well can completely slide out in order for you to stick a clone in there, which personally I've just shoved the clone gunner in there and I mean, I can fit him in with his blaster. I don't want to have a ton of loose weapons lying around, so that's what I personally did. So it's good to know that he can fit in there nice and easily. But there is a little axle piece here which connects into this joint right here. So this entire thing is very secure when you do put that little cockpit section in. The entire thing as well does fit on these sliding rails. So it works really well, very smooth, and it's really easy to get them in and out. And I just love how they did do that axle so that I don't have to worry about this entire section coming off. Now heading back to the turret at the top, like I said, it's very long. You've got this very sort of brick built shock base here, which also does have a space to fit a minifigure. Not connected by studs though, they sort of just sit in 
there in order to control this turret at the top. On either side as well, there are some small stud shooters, which luckily since they're gray, they blend in pretty well and they're very discreet. As we turn the ATTE around the side, you'll see that there are these little side panels that can sort of flip up. They can't really bend too much more than that. However, because they're on little axle joints, you can twist it in order to get a better look at the inside of it. All four of the sides do open as well as open up the top to really get some really good access into the interior of the ATT. Now, when you open it up, admittedly, it does look a little bit more roomy than it actually is. In this little back corner here, there's this little clip stand thing, which I personally wanted to try and store the blasters on here. Cause again, I don't want to have loose weapons lying around, but they don't necessarily quite fit. If you took the candlesticks off, you'd probably have a much better sort of shot at stacking them up. But again, I don't want tons of loose pieces, so do keep that in mind as you are storing these in the ATTE. Besides that, there are five seats for your clone. So really you can fit every single clone in this whole back section. But for me, I just took all my two 12th clones and shoved them in there. There is quite a bit of space, but I guess if you're really gonna fill it up that much, it's not all too forgiving, despite having a bunch of empty studs everywhere that you probably could place figures down because at the end, when you close up the entire thing, you do actually block off a lot of that headspace, which is why I feel like the interior actually quite isn't as roomy as you'd probably think it is looking at it. But that's the entire interior piece together. And as you can see, the whole thing just clips back in really neat and tidy. If you also lift it up a little bit, it is tiny bit gappy here. There are quite a few little holes and things like that, and you can see into it. But for the most part, you shouldn't be able to see them when you're looking at the model. As we move into the front section interior of the ATT, you'll see that there are two more seats and this entire middle section actually does pop out. It's not attached with any studs, which means it's really easy to get your clone troopers in and out of the seats, which is really convenient because it's a very tight squeeze in there and unlike the bat, doesn't entirely open up. Zooming back in on the interior and there is a tiny little bit of detail. On one of the sides, you have some of the detonators and on the other side, there's just a little crate. It's a little bit of a tight squeeze, but I'm glad that that extra interior sort of was put in there, especially with the additional seats, just to really prove that this is a clone transport. There is a lot of stuff that you can fit in there and you can expand your army and still have room for everyone. So that is the ATTE and overall, I'm a pretty big fan of this set. I mean, I think it's definitely a little bit overhyped purely because, I mean, it's the set that we get Commander Cody. You get a lot of clones. Everyone loves clones. But that being said, it is a great set for what it is. I definitely just did not enjoy the build, but the model I got at the end of it, I'm really impressed with. I love the minifigure selection. It's amazing to have a lot of clones in a sort of clone transport set with a a lot of battle droids as well. There are a couple of things missing from this set, but overall, I don't think it's anything too major that would really detract from this set or makes this set any lesser than it is. So I'm really happy with my purchase. It's gonna be a really tough one to get for the first couple of months. I mean, people are gonna be buying this in multiples because it is an army building set alongside any potential scalpers. But in general, there's just a lot of interest in this set and a lot of people that want it. So if you don't manage to get one in the first couple of months, don't don't worry, this thing will probably restock. But if you do want to order it, I will leave any links I can find in order to do so in the description down below. But let me know what you guys think of this set. How many do you plan on getting? Are you gonna army build it? What do you think of Commander Cody? Let me know in the comments down below. And if you guys enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel down below. And until next time, I'll see you later.